Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emily thompson Prisier, and today I'll be talking about the effect of technology on our mental health, physical appearance, and posture. So throughout the years, as technology has evolved and researchers have seen how we reacted to it, it has been proven that we, in the year 3000, we will somewhat look like this. In this picture, they state that we will probably have a hunchback and neck, text claw, 90 degree elbow, a second eyelid, a thicker skull and a smaller brain, and a tech neck. So not only are they saying that we won't be very smart, but do you really want to look like this? How can we prevent any of this from happening? Well, posture is extremely important. So always make sure that you're sitting straight. I mean, how many of you are sitting straight right now? <laughs> Another one is your neck. Every time you look at a device, you tend to look down. So make sure you stretch it from time to time to make sure it doesn't get stiff. So now we know there's posture, but there's also your eyes. And that's extremely important. Whatever you're reading on a device, make sure that it's big enough for you not to be forcing yourself to read. And of course, o avoiding overhead lighting. Your eyes tend to get dry as you look at a device. So make sure you blink. And that is because of blue light. That causes discomfort in your eyes and causes your eyes to get dry and to blink less. On a, on a device, we blink 70% less. And finally, every 10, 20 minutes, look up and focus on a point once you've looked at it. This will decrease the probability of you having myopia or being nearsighted in the future. For example, one of my friends started wearing glasses during quarantine because we were spending so much time on a computer. I also believe that we started using our phones much more during quarantine because we were bored. Nowadays, we've lost our creativity and we're not as productive as we were before. And it shows because our vision has gone down a lot. For example, in the 1970s, the American population, one quarter of them, had myopia, while today, it's two. Even though we don't exactly know how many people had myopia in the 1970s in the world, we do know that it was quite common. And in 2010, 27% of them had myopia. Imagine how much it increased in 13 years. A lot. So there's myopia, and there's being nearsighted. In Asia, it's 80 to 90% of people that are nearsighted. I remember when I lived in Asia, I used to see people glued to their phone all the time. And my friends used to get their phones stolen because they didn't see a motorbike coming towards them to get their phone. And while in the US and Europe, it's 30 to 40%. And you can clearly see why our vision has gone down badly. Because we spend so much time on a digital device. In America, average of people spend 4.7 hours a day on any digital device. While in, while in the world, it's 6 hours and 58 minutes. So this is counting computers, tablets, phones. But on our phone, we spend 4.5 hours a day in average in the world. If you t we have 12 hours in a day. You take those four hours away, you have eight hours left. You're spending those four hours looking at something that is probably useless. And you're not being productive, you're not being creative. And the worst part is, the recommended time is two hours. But are we respecting this? No. So it can cause your vision to go bad, your posture as well, but it's very bad for your mental health as well. You can start getting migraines or even have symptoms of anxiety or depression. And that is because we're so addicted to technology in general. We don't know how to control ourselves. So how can we do that? 
maybe we can start by having a kind of schedule where we'd have 10 minutes in the morning to check our emails and do whatever we need to do, and 10 minutes in the afternoon. This, with this, we can manage our time. There's another one, though, a timer. I know that some of you have a limit on your phone, but for those of you that don't, do you really look once you started looking at your phone at 10 or 2 and you stopped at 10.20? you're not aware of how much time you spent on it. And some of these apps, such as Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, have taken action. You now have the, the possibility of every 5, 10, 20 minutes for it to tell you once you spend that amount of time. The only problem is you can ignore it. The best thing that they could do would be that they could have the option to take you out of the app for the amount of time that you would wish. But will they want to do this? No. It would mean less business, less money. Why would they? So the only way that we can do this is by self-managing ourselves. And when you get a notification, for example, you remind yourself that you have a phone and that you can use it. So this is already a pretty bad side of notifications. But the Worst part is, when you get one, it makes you happy, which triggers dopamine. And when you receive dopamine, researchers have seen that that triggers the same thing as drugs do on your brain. All these kind of diseases, illnesses, syndromes will continue increasing throughout the years. For example, we have a new one, which is called Phantom Vibration Syndrome which is when you thought you heard your phone vibrate, well, really, there was nothing. So what did we learn? We learned that if you don't want to look like this in the future, or if you wouldn't, be careful, take precautions. Because you might think that social media or technology doesn't affect you that much and doesn't have that big of an impact, but it does, and it's big, and it's happening very, very fast. So be careful. Thank you.